Yeah, I have a YouTube channel and I'm doing a video about Lewistown. And I was supposed to meet with somebody here to just get a statement about how they feel between the battle of the Save the Cowboys and the American Prairie. Yeah, Probably. Probably. Familiar yeah. Story. Yeah. They're up at the restaurant right now. They'll be back. Okay. Yeah, it went up to 618, Corey and Sarah. Nick. Yes, Were you emailing or texting with somebody? Um, e emailing, and then I had a phone call with. Um... That's me getting thrown out of a nonprofit headquarters. You wouldn't think that a nonprofit that's supposed to be saving the environment or whatever would toss a YouTuber out of their building, but this one did. Never heard of that before. Just about everyone in this small Montana town does not like this organization. And it seems like this nonprofit doesn't like me. I didn't think that a little small town in the middle of nowhere's Montana would have so much drama, but it does. A lot of drama. Seems like you can't go anywhere in America anymore and not see drama. I spent two days in Lewistown, Montana, population 6,000. I wanted to show you guys what it's like in a small town on the edge of the great frontier. I was getting close to the end of the third week on this trip at this point, and this whole part of the country was really starting to grow on me. And this place, well, I think you're going to like it. Howdy. This is downtown Lewistown. Some say this is one of the last great small towns left in Montana. Sure is pretty, isn't she? Then we're going to drive around Lewistown and find out what she's all about. Some say there's a big battle going on between the cowboys and the prairie thieves. I'm pulling for the cowboys. Always do. <laughs> Rise and shine, Montana. Now this is some country heaven, isn't it? I bet the polar bears and reindeer walk right on up to these porches and eat right out of these folks' hands. This all looks like something you'd see in a movie or in a calendar or something. These people sure are lucky to have this to look at every day, right? Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I like to show you guys a side of life that's more simple. Smaller communities that no one's heard of before. I spent most of this trip in bigger cities. But today, we're going to see what a small town in the Mountain West looks like. More and more of us want to get away from the BS going on in too many people land. Well, we're a hundred miles from everything here. A tiny little town in an ocean of land. Lewistown, Montana comes highly recommended from folks in the state. I ask people in Montana, where's a good example of a small town here that has good values and where it's safe and where people have a decent life? And quite a few people said, you need to go to Lewistown. We're in about as middle of Montana as you can get out here. So you could say, the street's in the exact center of the state. Kinda. Even though it's in the heart of Montana, it's not booming here. 
that's the point. These people don't want all the big city touches. Traffic, bums, crime. Nope, not here. That's why they're here. We are far away from an airport or a train. Blue Sound was founded in 1879, back when Montana was just a territory. Most of the people who lived here back then were the Métis, which were a race from French Canadians and Native Americans. And then right after this place was settled, they found gold in them thar hills. So everybody came here, and by 1899, they officially made Lewistown a city. There were only a thousand people here in 1900. There's only 6,000 here now. So it hasn't been booming here, as you can see. But I mean, there's not a lot to draw people in who are in the prime of their lives. This isn't a place for you to move for jobs or cultural experiences. That doesn't mean it's not a great place to be. slice of the American West where they still have Main Street parades and cookouts and everyone knows everyone so you better not cause trouble it's kind of hard to get away with shit in a small town like this where everybody has a gun and knows where you live and they have great water here supposedly and they remind you of that as soon as you come into town. Lewistown looks good now, but it had some hard times. A lot of Main Street was closed down and the energy here was gone. The railroads and gold rush had ended and the place was just stagnant. But then area farmers came in and invested in some new businesses and then downtown started to come back to life. Plus the town didn't shut down during COVID. So a lot of new people came up here and looked around and they were like, I'm moving here or at least I'm buying some land. It's not very diverse here, but you probably knew that. 95% of this town is middle class, middle aged white people. It's pretty libertarian here, conservative, but not churchy. I think half the folks in town don't even bother with Sunday service. And this isn't the right wing prepper crowd. That's over in Idaho. I'll tell you what, talk about safe. I don't think anyone in town remembers when the last murder was. It doesn't even look like there's even robberies here either. I think the place averages less than one reported crime a week. The leading story in the local paper one day was about hail damage in a local park. Must be nice, right? I think if somebody tried to do a smash and grab here, they'd get run out real fast. I think if somebody tried to set up a homeless tent downtown, somebody would come by and shoot a hole in it or slash it with their damn spur. Nuh-uh. Not here you won't do that. Don't try that in my small town, they'd say.
middle Montana is mostly wheat farming and cattle ranching. Lewistown's completely surrounded by farms and ranches and country life. It's peaceful and quiet. And beyond all this, it's wide open Montana wilderness. Now there's a lot of drama happening here with farming. That's the stuff I showed you at the beginning. And we're gonna come back to that in a minute. But I can say, folks out here sure don't like liberal stuff. No way, Jose. I did see one Joe Biden supporter out here. I think their neighbors probably hate that sign. For fun, you're gonna have a lot of outdoor stuff. There's four golf courses here. But we're in Montana, mister. It's all about shooting stuff and getting back into the mountains on skis or on horseback or snowmobiles. Of course, I'm here in the summer, so it's totally lovely. But in the winter months, a lot of Montana is very gloomy and cold. It could be a very depressing place for half the year. So you'll find that a lot of people in town are down at the local bar. Beginning around noon, folks start to shuffle around from bar to bar to find a buzz. And then likely we'll plop down in front of a slot machine. If there's something Montana people love more than whiskey and guns, it's their casinos. Casino. Casino. They're everywhere. It's a Montana thing. It doesn't matter how small your town is. Could be 25 people in town and they have a casino there. People in Montana love to play slot machines. Love it, love it, love it. There is something kind of comforting about being in here though. You're entertained, kinda. But it's quiet and nobody bothers you. It's just you, a plastic cup of whiskey, and that damn machine. But they do seem to kind of suck the life out of folks in town, I have to say. I played a little bit. I didn't win. Never do. These things suck. That's me cashing out from a $20 investment. No one to fold them. Hi. Oh, really? Why is the other one a win? So what are the neighborhoods like here? What's it like to live here? Well, in a town like this, you either pick city limits or outside city limits. We're going to begin in town proper. There really isn't a bad side of town. Where we are right now is just some average street, just a few blocks from the main drag. Most of the homes in this part of town are under $200,000. Well, I mean, they're valued at under two hundred k, but good luck getting one before somebody else does. Homes in Lewistown go fast. I think there were four homes for sale when I was here. This one right here was for sale for $112,000. It was probably sold before I even got to Bozeman the next day. Citywide, you can get a home in town for about 250k, but that's going to change. I mean, a lot of people want to come to Montana now. The television set made the place seem cool, and the politics are desirable, and it's cheap and safe. Hell of a lot better than the hell holes in Southern California. You can make a nice life here and not have to work long hours and sit in traffic. And I'm pretty sure the kids are safe. These people look out for one another. Your kid doesn't show up on time and five people 
probably know where he is. Now up here, we're a few miles from downtown. This is where the nicest homes in town are. You can kind of see how the upper middle class lives in small town Montana. Stuff out here is in the $350,000 range. That's just about the average home price in America. I don't know about you, but this looks good to me. Now, I don't know what these people do for work, but they seem to have it all figured out. Some nice neighborhood in the middle of Montana, away from everyone. Except that damn YouTube guy with the camera. They're like, damn it. But I'm telling you, Lewistown's one of the last best small towns Montana has left. This is where all the people are going to flee when the big cities get too crowded. Or the bums move in, like over in Bozeman. I heard a rumor that the CEO of PayPal is looking to live here. That's interesting. I showed you this earlier. This was one of the more rural areas outside of town. Big old homes with a lot of land. You might be surprised. Stuff like this could be 300K, and then some stuff's close to a mill these days. But can you picture yourself on your porch with a mug of joe and a shotgun? I can. Look at these mailboxes. There's about 10 houses that are so far down, you can't even see the, where they are. Just way down that road. That's how it is out here. Rural Montana. Now I found the other rural part of town late one afternoon. And I was like, this is about as country a place as I've seen so far on this trip. Now, I'm not going to get into politics too much because I talk about it all the time. But you're in Montana, you got to talk about politics. That's what's driving everything right now. I hear from some of the liberals in town that they don't feel welcomed in Lewistown. Some of the gays and black folks feel the town's out to get them. Well, three quarters of the population here votes red, and they ain't going back anytime soon. But Montana's more liberal than you might think. It was kind of a purple state forever. And people say the state was well run when it was a purple state. Now you have the liberals coming in. And they're like, these all hat, no cattle Republicans are moving in. And they're raping the land. And waging a war with the middle class. They're like, for us, Montana's poverty with a view. And then you have the conservatives here that are pissed about all the new people from California coming up here and trying to make everything woke. Never a dull day in Montana, I tell ya. Now, let's talk about the drama happening here. So most Montanans out this way make their living somehow related to agriculture and cattle. And even if you don't work in farming, you're impacted by it. 
like the town you're in relies on the area of farmers for business and investments, or your relative's a farmer, or, well, you get it. Everything out this way is all about agriculture. Well, in 2004, a nonprofit called the American Prairie Reserve started buying up farmland in Nebraska. They said that they wanted to buy up big chunks of farmland from farmers and ranchers and then clear the land of crops and cattle and basically just turn the land back over to nature. So they're going around and they're offering landowners out here a bunch of money so they can turn everything back to prairie and then let the bison roam free. They say it's going to help with the environment. So this nonprofit American Prairie Reserve has now become this huge nonprofit landowner out in this part of the country. Well, then they set their eyes on Montana. They were like, let's buy all the farms and ranches in central Montana because they don't need farming or ranching up there anymore. <laughs> well, you can imagine how that went. All over this part of Montana, you have these Save the Cowboy signs. It's a battle now. A line's been drawn in the wheat. Just about everybody around here hates this land-grabbing nonprofit. Used to be the Cowboys versus the Indians out here. Now it's the Cowboys versus the Prairie Robbers. Folks out here are like, you're not going to take our farms. Our whole town's going to disappear without our farmers and ranchers around. What are you thinking? Who do you guys think you are? And where do you get your money? And what's your end goal? This all seems very shady. And why are your investors based out of Germany? Well, there's lawsuits involved. Fingers are being pointed. Land management decisions are questioned. The prairie people are trying to change laws to get their way. And they have a lot of money. And the small landowners are fighting back. It's a big mess. It all sounds like a Yellowstone episode. This is the climate of central Montana right now. Okay, so this nonprofit, the NPR, they have a big headquarters in downtown Lewistown. So I thought, since I was here, I would talk to them, and then I would talk to the Save the Cowboy people and give both sides a chance to share their side of the story. First, I went to the Prairie Place. Their HQ is in a place called the National Discovery Center. The biggest, fanciest building in the county. Don't know where the money for that place came from. Now, I had an interview set up with the Prairie people. But when I got there, the people who worked there were like, uh, there's nobody here to talk to you. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. I'm supposed to be um, talking with somebody um, about uh, American Prairie Reserve for a video that I'm working on. About a video? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel and I'm doing a video about Lewistown. And I was supposed to meet with somebody here to just get a statement about how they feel between the battle of the Save the Cowboys and the American Prairie. Corey. Yeah, does Corey? That sound, Probably. Does that sound familiar yeah. to Corey? Yeah, yeah. They're up at the restaurant right now, and they'll be back. Okay. Yeah, it went up to 618, according to What's Sarah. What's your name? Nick. Nick. Oh. Then they frantically got on the phone and called their PR person. They were like, somebody's here to talk to us. What do we do? Kind of, it was kind of odd. I kind of stood there, and I was trying to explain, like, I'm just here to ask a few questions about what you guys are doing. I kind of waited outside in the lobby for about a half hour. People in there were very elusive about everything and wouldn't answer my questions. I was like, you're a nonprofit saving prairie land for bison. Why is everybody in here acting so dodgy? And then the PR lady called my phone and told me, you have to leave. What the hell? So I told people in town what happened and they were saying, doesn't surprise me. 
Told you. They can't be trusted. They're up to no good, damn it. And I was like, I kind of see what you guys mean. Ain't no prairie thieves gonna take my land. Mappy, no. There's a right way and a wrong way to deal with thieves. Plus, they don't want your land. You live in the city. You mess with the bull and you get the horns. We dare defend our rights. Well, Mappy, I think this whole Mountain West trips brought a sight out of you I ain't seen before. Heck, I think the good folks in Lewistown might just vote for you for mayor. So I talked to a couple people in town who voiced their concerns about having their land taken and being put out of business. One of them was a rancher just outside of town. I ran into him at the Lewistown Livestock Auction one afternoon. Well, we're, we're fortunate to live in central Montana where uh, for so many years, forever really, this has been an ag-based community. Um, you know, this isn't the only group that, that has uh, challenged that uh, and, and that way of life, but certainly one that's, that's got our attention. Um, there, there's certainly some positives that come with, when, with a discussion like this, and there's no question about that. We're, I think as a whole, collectively, uh, we're, we're open to those kinds of discussions. But when you talk about fundamentally changing the foundation of a community, that's, what we sh that's, that's a tough conversation. Talk about the school systems, talk about the workforce, talk about production agriculture and how it influences, especially a small town like Lewistown. Um, that's where the concern lies, because you can't replace the sense of community with tourism. So we have that on one side one side of the table. We have the concern with, well, what does Lewistown look like in 10, 15, 20, 25 years? Um, I was fortunate enough to be born and raised here and uh, am pretty proud of, of what this community is, what it has been, and what it continues to be. We see a lot of young agriculture producers in this area, cow-calf and uh, farming uh, producers both. And um, there's some opportunity here yet, but it becomes more and more challenging as time goes on, not just due to, to things like the discussion we're having now, but just uh, progress, general progress. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's unfortunate that we've, we've probably drawn some lines in the sand at this point uh, on both sides uh, that, have, that have maybe hindered some of that discussion and how it can move forward uh, with, with progress uh, that benefits everyone. But uh, for, for us, it's a community discussion here that, that we're having, and we're starting to see fragments of, of central Montana disappearing because of American Prairie. Then I talked to Anna Morris. Now, she's been a big opponent of the Prairie Thieves. She runs an implement dealership in town. She was born and raised on a farm right here in Lewistown. We didn't hear much about what was going on until they started growing a little more. When they bought the PN on the south side of the Missouri River, that's when we all got concerned a little more as they were expanding because we realized what it was gonna do to all of these small towns everywhere in Montana, not just central Montana, but how it was gonna affect the whole state and the dynamics of why we love this state, agriculture and small town living and everything we love about it. Tell me, what, what's it going to do to the small town? Like, what, what's the potential? Is it happening now, what, it, what their impact is? And what's the potential impact on small towns and, and the state, what they're doing? So what they're doing is they're buying up private property that has large amounts of federal and state land that goes with it. And so they're taking people off of that land that are using it for production agriculture and their taxpayers and their productive people into our communities. They're people that go to the grocery store. They're people that work at the post office. They're people that work at the cynics, at the implement dealerships. But when you remove all those people, there's gonna be nobody left to keep these little towns open. Where are we headed here? What's the worst case if they have their way and they continue to do what they're doing, where, where, where are we headed with Montana? Well, we'll all be gone. You know, the, their plan is to have three and a half million acres around Fort Peck Lake. So Lewistown will be gone. Um, 
you know, what's the point of all these little towns besides Lewistown and it'll expand into Billings and Great Falls and everything, Glasgow, all of these towns around it. So what's the whole impact on it? They want to make another Yellowstone National Park. Well, we already have Yellowstone and it's beautiful and we have Glacier and it's beautiful. And there's lots of ground that people can come out and explore on the prairie. We do not need to take agriculture production farms and ranches out of agriculture to to just let waste away where does it stop who's next who's going to go after everybody else's rights we're going to come back to the save the cowboy people later when i was out and about in lewistown i totally did as much as i could do in the two days i was here now, earlier I showed you a little bit of life out in rural land. One afternoon I was driving around and he came across a camel in somebody's yard. It's not, I was like, it's not every day you see a camel. Hey, camel. And man, even the camel hates the American prairie people. Hey. On the first day, my driver and I went out to the local creek to put our feet in the water. This is the watering hole where the locals dip in. The water was freezing, and it was mid-July, too. This was week three, and it was time I did some laundry. I smelled like a Montana sheep farmer. Well, the only laundromat in town sucked. Everything was out of order. Don't Montana people wear clean clothes, I wondered? Maybe they still just use clotheslines. Now, both nights we ate dinner at the Big Springs Brewing Company. Neat place. And guess what? I had steak. Again. I think my cholesterol levels were jamming because this was two straight weeks of steaks. They have microwavable pork rinds now? <laughs> what? Of course, everybody in there had boots on. I didn't, and I felt out of place. The whole time we were in town, it was boots, 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 and cowboy wallets, and cowboy belts, and cowboy hats. And then the second night we were here, there was this big agriculture parade. An entire fleet of farming vehicles passed right through downtown one day on their way to or from a harvest. And I mean a big parade. Took damn near 20 minutes. Shut the whole town down. They have a side-by-side -side dealership right in the heart of downtown. A lot of people here take their off-road vehicles into downtown. Probably driving and drinking. I went into the fleet supply in town to see what they have. Because you need to see how small town Montana people shop and stuff. Look at all those dungarees and wranglers and all this macho shit. Just aisles and aisles of macho manly clothing. Kind of messy in here, but I don't think anyone cares about that. You could do a lot of damage with those tools. A lot of damage.
I sure do love the sound of a gravel road. There's something about it that's comforting to me. A lot of people in town have grills on the front of their vehicles because people hit big mammals out this way on the back roads. I saw a sedan with the biggest grill I've ever seen on it. Wish I got the whole thing on camera, damn it. Poetry? What? Barber shop next to a funeral home. That's some small town stuff right there. When we were in town, we stayed at the Calvert Hotel. One of the few places on this trip that wasn't haunted. The place is great. Look at that dining hall. So clean and neat. That might be the best thing I've ever eaten. I'm not kidding. It was here in Lewistown when I first discovered the bliss that is huckleberries. I'll get into huckleberries a lot more when I get to Idaho. But basically, they are the best thing Mother Nature ever invented. I'd never heard of them before. I got some huckleberry ice cream and I was like, what is this magical concoction? As I learned, they only grow up here in this part of the country for a certain time of year. They are a prized, hard to find commodity up here in the Northwest. And also here's an update on the bug palette. <laughs> This was three weeks and about a thousand miles in at this point. And I was pretty proud of my bug artwork. I hadn't cleaned the Jeep once. I'm a bug mass murderer out on these Mountain West highways. That's highways and highways and highways. Nothing but bugs. And then at night I walked around because it was nice and quiet. Every Montana town's got to have a Mexican joint. Dang, nobody wants to work in Montana either. That sucks. Until August. I know. Bluestone Boutique has boutique stuff. Huh. If you're on the coast, it's boats for sale. But out here, it's tractors and ranch and stuff for sale. And the artwork here is very horsey, kind of hee-haw, right? And the small town Montana fashion, everyone. Looks pretty good. Of course, everybody told me, you need to go to the Montana Tavern. I guess they could tell that it was my kind of place. And yeah, they were right. And look, there's a river that goes right underneath the place. You can see it. That's that famous spring water I told you about. It's supposed to be really clean. From what I hear now, it's contaminated because the pipes in town are bad. Can't we just have anything nice? Well, I was at the Montana Tavern. I played some Waylon, and that went over okay. But I got outspent by a crowd that wanted to hear Pink, which surprised me. Of course, I played the slots. Have to do that. Montana. Pushing gaming buttons with one hand and a stiff whiskey in the other. Surrounded by wheat fields. It's the kind of people I really like. They make sense here. They have good values. Small town Montana 
is a rare breed. Good people, Montanans are. They work hard and don't ask for anything in return. And Lewistown is a good town to be proud of. Ten years ago, Lewistown was dying. And then with hard work and grit and tenacity, they brought it back. Them prairie thieves have their way. Lewistown will be a damn ghost town one day. Hell with that. We ain't got a lot of good small towns left. We need to hold on to what we got. It's because you can't replace the sense of community with tourism. It doesn't, that, that's, not, that's not possible in my opinion. Uh, we've seen it happen to a lot of our friends in other parts of Montana, some of the more beautiful parts of the state. Um, and, and it's starting to happen here to some extent. And, and like I say, it's not just American Prairie. Uh, there's certainly some you know, absentee land ownership that becomes part of this discussion where <clears throat> there's a lot more emphasis on hunting and, and uh, development for wildlife than it is production agriculture. Not that that's wrong. Everybody's got their thing and we live in a free country, a free market. And uh, those places that turn over and change hands are doing so on an open uh, and fair market. There's no question about that. Uh, but again, uh, for, for me, it comes back to, you know, what makes a vi viable community. And for central Montana, um, it's been agriculture. Now, we're also fortunate to have industry and several very, um, very viable businesses here that provide a, a, a good workforce and a good uh, labor environment. Um, uh, and we're a little bit isolated. We're off the beaten path. We're, we're not on the interstate. Um, so there's, there's a lot of small town that happens, but yet, you know, there's about eight smaller communities that all economic center here. And, and so it, it's, it's, a, it's a discussion that's probably part of a bigger discussion. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned other communities, you've seen them be impacted and you're worried that that might happen here. What is it that's disappeared and what could happen here that would change? If you go to the Gallatin, if you spend time in Bozeman. We're going to you, Bozeman tomorrow. It, yeah, if you spend time in Missoula, uh, in the Bitterroot, in Kalispell and Whitefish, uh, those communities have grown exponentially because they're next to big recreation, right? Big skiing, big snowmobiling, big mountains, big water, uh, bigger water than what you find around here. Um, so it certainly attracted uh, an entirely different demographic. And um, it just, it changes the nature of a community. Is it right? Is it wrong? I guess, you know, who am I to answer that? Because I certainly don't blame anybody for wanting to live here in Montana. And we want anybody that moves here to feel as welcome as anybody that grew up here. But on the other hand, when we fundamentally change, the, change, change a community to the way, you know, the, the place was that you left, um, well, these people are leaving for a reason, so don't come here and try to make it where you, where you came from. Come and appreciate it for what it is, and I think, um, you know, but that's, again, another, a part of another discussion uh, that's probably bigger than, than one specific uh, mm -hmm. conversation we could have. Mm -hmm. So you, you envision Lewistown being just, if, if a group comes in and changes the culture and the dynamics and the economy of the place, it's going to change the community? It definitely will impact the community. Now, everyone will have an opinion of whether that's better or worse for the community. But again, I'll go back to the fact that, you know, we're not just talking about, uh, we're not talking about the community as a whole. We've talked about the school system specifically. We talk about the volunteer fire department. Um, you know, who, if there's nobody living in rural Montana, who's going to fight fires when we have, you know, when Mother Nature rears, rears her ugly head? Um, law enforcement, you know, again, it, it, it's all part of the economic picture too. And, and agriculture is, again, as we have these other industries here in central Montana, agriculture is still the anchor. And we're very proud of that. Maybe not every one of them work there, but they all produce and contribute back to all of that. So whether they're buying oil at the local Senex or equipment from the local implement dealer, they're all giving back to it. And when you take all those people off the land to put it aside as a preserve for people to come out and visit, how do you keep these towns living? You can't. There's more and more people moving away from agriculture because equipment is becoming um, more productive. We are making we're being more productive and not just our grain and our hay and everything. So there's less and less people that need to do the work. But when you remove all those people, there's going to be nobody left to keep these little towns open. Nobody's going to go to the local little diner when all the farmers and ranchers are gone. 
you might have one or two tourists that stop there. How many people stop through Lewistown right now going to the APR's land to hike around and everything? How many of them are going into the grocery stores? Not very many. I mean, they might buy a little gas, but is that paying everybody's salaries? What about the kids in the schools? I mean, we are struggling to keep all of these little schools open. So we're sending our kids hours on buses all over, not just Montana, but rural America. Our kids are spending more time on buses because all these little schools are closing. Well, when you take all those kids and all those families off the place, you're just destroying it little by little. Yeah. And there is not enough tourism that is going to offset any of that. Isn't. So, um, one of the things that makes their whole plan work is to be able to get all of the federal and state land, okay? So, you have to have a private partial to be able to run on the BLM and state ground. And right now, under the Taylor Grazing Act, which is a federal law, you cannot run bison on BLM allotments. So instead of them trying to change the Taylor Grazing Act to get bison as an approved grazer, they are trying to get the local BLM to do it the back doorway. All right, well, they're a nonprofit. So how are they subleasing their BLM and they're charging people for that? So they're making money on it. How can you do that when you're a nonprofit? Do you feel most of Montana doesn't like what they're doing? Most people, not just in Montana, we've actually shipped um, signs all over North Dakota, South Dakota, and all over, but most people that actually listen to what um, they're doing and fully understand what their whole scope is, they don't agree with it. I mean, if you read a few little blurbs about how they want to reintroduce bison, we don't have anything against bison. It's not the bison, it's the fact that they're not following the rules, but they want to reintroduce bison and they want to save all the grass. Well, who do you think took care of the grass for the last hundred plus years? The ranchers and farmers that are here. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting, that's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.